Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. People who don't like renewable energy often worry about all that agricultural land being lost. In Alberta, it turns out that solar and wind projects will take up less than 1% of farmland by 2041. This according to the Alberta Utility Commission in a January 2024 report. But hold it, the story gets even better. Claude Mindorf is a farmer who now works in the renewable energy industry and just helped found Agrivoltaics Canada. He says solar and agriculture are two peas in a pod and can work together to enhance the productivity and the viability of the family farm. Mindorf says there are three general approaches to agrivoltaics. Field agrivoltaics, which is what we're involved in, is uh, as opposed to building agrivoltaics, is largely three kinds. So you have you have the cereal grain uh, situation like we have in Alberta, where there are system designs for vertical panels where you can grow tall crops like corn and grain and canola in between. Um, then there is uh, what we call the, the market garden approach where the canopies almost touch on the top or they're V-shaped and almost touch on the sides where they provide shade and shelter for tender fruits like strawberries, bench strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, hascups. These are all the crops that are grown. And then on the ground, in a lot of situations, uh, there's leafy vegetables that are grown. Any of the nightshades, potatoes, beets, uh, tomatoes, peppers, grow incredibly well under solar. Uh, lots of research in Oregon and Arizona. Again, in desert conditions where they're growing a lot of vegetables, where they've experimented with growing under solar. And then the third uh, array is what you see here, you know, single ground mount uh, panels or single axis tracking where we're grazing is the primary activity uh, underneath and then rotating crops in every few years to reduce the, root, the, the, the site becoming root bound. Because even hay after a few years um, becomes less productive as the, as the roots get bound up. And we're already seeing this in Alberta. The Claire's Home Solar Farm is a large 132 megawatt solar farm in southern Alberta. The solar developer involved the Hutterite landowners in construction work building the solar farm, and today the farmers graze sheep on the site just as they've always done. And on those hot summer days, nearly all of the sheep hide beneath the solar modules to escape the heat. Mindorf says there's also a lot of potential for agricultural product producers to co-locate with these solar farms to secure low-cost energy. By co-locating on the, a site with a solar farm like this, they have the opportunity to be net zero and control their energy costs. And so a lot of what we do as a developer is talking to other agricultural producers and primary product processors about co-locating on our sites. And so that's how Agrivoltaics helps. Agrivoltaics helps with the viability of the family farm, and Mindorf says it can also help Canada get to net zero. Well, the sky's the limit, uh, literally, uh, no pun intended, that's where our energy comes from, but uh, we did some studies with Western University, uh, Dr. Joshua Pierce led in his research group, and came up uh, with an analysis that to achieve all of Canada's current electricity consumption, electrons or kilowatt hours does it take to power Canada, and found that less, by province, less than 1% of the agricultural lands uh, under utility scale development, such as Joffrey, where we've, we've covered a good portion of the land with solar, uh, can provide Canada's electricity. So just a stunning amount from well thought out projects. There was a lot of concern about <coughs> solar taking arable land out of production. Uh, with agrivoltaics, that's completely not the case. In fact, we're improving agriculture and showing a pathway to net zero uh, while we produce Canada's food. Claude Mindorf may work for a solar company, but he also volunteers his time to test, refine, and push the envelope on agrivoltaics. Next time on Green Energy Future, Claude takes us to Joffrey, Alberta, where we meet up with Sean Morton, a fourth-generation farmer who's jazzed about solar on his farm. Subscribe to our podcast at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.